Hi, today we are going to replace this very common joystick that I use to play games on my Commodore 64 with NES D-pad. Well, to be precise with this cheap Chinese NES D-pad. Well, to do this we will need to make some modifications. So why should you replace a joystick with a D-pad? Well, on some games a D-pad could be a better option over a joystick, especially on platform games as such. But this is not a conclusive and it is very subjective matter of choice, or whether you prefer a joystick or D-pad depends entirely on you. Today I prefer a D-pad. Now, this D-pad comes with a USB connector, but we need a DB9 connector to hook it up to Commodore 64 or any other computer that uses Atari DB9 joystick ports. So, here I have a cable from another joystick that was broken beyond repair, so I will use its cable. So, what I will do is to remove USB cable from the D-pad completely and replace it with this one, DB9 cable. From another joystick. But first we need to open the D-pad to see what do we have inside. So this is a very small PCB inside, very cheaply made with some mystery IC in the black blob here. A PCB is held only with one screw. But what is very neat on this PCB is that all pads have exposed solder points with the solder mask removed and I will use these points to solder new wires directly for each of the pads. First let's desolder this USB cable. can leave it for some other project. Next I will remove this crystal oscillator and I hope that this will disable this IC under this big blob. Now I will map the color of the wires with the DB9 connector pinout, so just to be sure.
Now I will map the pads on the PCB with actual functions of the D-pad. So I will find the up, where is up, where is down, where is fire button and so on. So just to mark uh, where the ground pin will be soldered and we can begin with soldering all the wires on the PCB.
Now I'm going to test if uh, all the keys are making good contact with the ground pin. So let's go one by one. All good and ready for proper test. So the D-pad works just fine. Um, I tested on the um, Commodore 64 Breadbin, uh, Commodore 64C works just fine. Um, the only um, issue that I had was on this machine. This is <coughs> BMC 64. So. <coughs> The problem was, um, um, as soon as I plugged it in, uh, it went all crazy. Uh, it detected the left movement, the right movement, switching between left and right, also up movement. Uh, it was all crazy. Um, <clears throat> but when I tested the wiring and everything, it was just fine, uh, all by the book. Um, but then, uh, if you remember, I left uh, that uh, IC blob on the PC. The only thing that I have done to disable it, um, sort of, uh, was uh, removing the crystal oscillator. So I was hoping that will keep him uh, dead. Uh, apparently not on this machine. So I uh, end up cutting the traces that led from the uh, pads to the to that uh, IC. And the second change that I have done um, is I read somewhere that uh, it is quite handy that uh, on this platform uh, games um, instead of uh, wiring both of these uh, uh, buttons to be uh, trigger buttons um, to wire one of them to the up up movement so and on the most of the games uh, uh, it's uh, up movement is a jump so uh, um, ah, okay uh, no. um, so I end up uh, uh, wiring this A button to the up movement and I'll show you how that works so here we go jumping and firing so this is fire this is jump and works just fine um, it's much better than joystick up personally to me uh, that was all for this episode and thank you for watching and goodbye oh and if you like to subscribe you can do that if you want to like or if you want to leave a comment be free to do that also I would highly appreciate it yes 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 <laughs> and of course